Kakuma Refugee Camp is located in northwestern Kenya. It's an area that's semi-arid, it's hot, it's dusty, but it's really full of life. Kakuma is a vibrant place. It has 19 nationalities of people who fled some awful wars, but you know, people who've managed to rebuild their lives um, somehow. And really, it's more than a camp. It's, it's a community. It's a neighborhood. In some cases, some people call it a small city. It's teeming with, with talent, with dreams, with hopes, and even with opportunity. I have done two TED Talks myself. I've gone to many TED conferences. Um, I, I see the power of TED, and it has the potential to shine a light on a place that nobody really heard of and to give remarkable refugees the stage for a change. From the beginning, we knew that everything that we needed, everything that we needed, we had to truck in. Now, this is a lot of stuff, very heavy equipment, uh, very sensitive equipment, therefore we needed the right trucks to get it through. But a journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step, right? To make the matter just a little bit more complicated, the one access way to Kakuma, which is the Kainuk Bridge, was washed off or washed away. So we were stuck. Yeah, trucks stuck there. I mean, the length of about seven kilometers. I grew up in Kakuma. And I'm very happy to come back as a refugee athlete, as an Olympian. It is much for me to come back to motivate my other young people who are refugees. So every refugee has a story to tell. But for TEDx Kakuma Camp, we were really looking for some specific things. We were looking for people that could speak to education, fleeing war, women's issues, the importance of art and sport. I lost all my family and I was, I was forced to leave because of violence. So I went to other Everybody's trying to learn their speech by heart. They're saying things that are really emotive. Um, they're saying things that happen to them and it's difficult to express, not only difficult to express, but difficult to express when you know how high the stakes are. Refugees are just people like us. They are caught up in events that are beyond their control. And if in some small way we can get people to have a greater sense of empathy for them, I think we will have done our jobs. As fate would have it, the rain stopped, the bridge was fixed, and we were able to cross with all of our equipment just in time to get to the camp to be able to set everything up. Motown comes in to put in the floor Monday morning, and then we're back on schedule, so we're good. It needed to be special. It needed to be quality on a global scale, a full-fledged production. We wanted to have this be the top TEDx event. The refugees deserve no less. We wanted their voices heard far and wide, and to have uh, what they were saying you know, broadcast to the world. You've set up the 3G already? Yeah, the 3G is up and it's working. Wow. Ah, oh, that is gorgeous. Are we in Kakuma? <laughs> <laughs> 
It says so, so we must. It's but uh, I feel like I want to cry too. I think it's amazing, which is an overused term, but I can't think of another. <laughs> I can't think of a better adjective, to be honest. Right. Amazing. Look at this, huh? I mean, are you also amazed at your own work? <laughs> Here's my speech. I've been rehearsing it for about two weeks. Somehow these words are evaporating. There's a lot of nerves today because, you know, it's the day before. So, yeah, the stage rehearsals are, some of them are saying, can I do it again? Can I do it again? Because everybody is kind of a perfectionist. And, yeah, I'm. Every time they're getting better, and I'm sure when they feel the energy of the audience tomorrow, they're just going to blow everybody away. The world needs to know that refugees are people, and we have the power within us to change this narrative of, of war, war, war. It's Saturday, it's just minutes before we're going live and there's a lot of nervousness in the air among um, organizers like me, but also actually the speakers are looking pretty calm. <laughs> Everyone is just excited because they know um, what this day really and truly means. When you're getting up there to do a TEDx talk, there's a sense of vulnerability that everyone has. This was standing up in front of the world and laying bare your ideas. Three, Q video, two, one, and we're live. Do you hear that? The sound of silence no gunshots. Peace at last. Domestic violence and child marriage need to be stripped out of our culture. We need to empower women. For if we empower women, we defeat poverty and defeat violence. In life, we all face a struggle. Either running away from it or running toward it. But the important thing is you keep on the road and you keep going. Kakuma Refugee Camp is my home, my future, my strength, and my inspiration. It is where I have learned that my dreams are valid too. <laughs> to see them on the stage. Uh, they've never been on a public stage this big, one that's being live streamed around the world, and they've never had a chance uh, to get, let their voices be heard. The refugee settlement and camp should become the rehabilitation point to give these people hope and to give them skills they can be able to utilize. The theme for this TEDx event was Thrive. And why did I pick the word Thrive? Because we believe at UNHCR that we want to help refugees thrive, not just survive. And it's also what refugees want themselves. Even though my sisters and I are suffering, there's no way we are heading that direction. I refuse to repeat history. Educating a girl will create equal and stable societies. And educated refugees will be the hope of rebuilding their countries some days. I really felt good. I felt so settled. I felt like the world has finally had the message. And that's what I wanted. Yeah. We need to change the way we treat refugees. And we need to change the way we do our own business as humanitarians. Because the refugees can actually do more than we expected and they can change their lives. The most special part of TEDx Kakuma Camp to me has been the impact. Seeing how it's impacted the refugees who were both a part of it 
and those who took part in it and those who watched. It allowed us to tell the story of Kakuma and yeah, that was really a great opportunity.